What is up, it's Vic your Hunter, and today we have a massive review of Garmin's new training readiness calculation. We are looking at it compared to the WHOOP recovery calculation, compared to the Polar nightly recharge calculation, and we're compared to the athletic calculation. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. Lots and lots and lots of content on the way. But this is one of the biggest data undertakings I've done in a while. So Garmin has this new training readiness metric, which is based on a multiple of physiological components. And it's highly debated. And the, the whoop people say it's not right. And, you know, different. there are different opinions about it when you look at other aspects. So I just thought, well, I'm just gonna track the data. I'm gonna track the data. I'm gonna track Whoop's recovery score because I've been wearing Whoop for a long time. I'm gonna track Polar's nightly recharge recommendations because I've been using Polar for a long time. And I'm even gonna work into the mix athletics recommendation, which is sort of a similar or mirror of the Whoop system if you have an Apple Watch. So in this review, we are looking at a basically six weeks of data from approximately July 1st to August 20th yesterday. So lots of information, lots of things, and we're gonna look at it in different slivers. First, we're gonna analyze what is Garmin's training readiness? What does it look like on the watch briefly? And then what does it primarily look like on the app? And more than that, what is it based on? What physiological things is it looking at to determine one primary recommendation? Then we're gonna compare it. How does it differ from Polar, from Whoop, from athletics comparison and where do they get their information specifically with athletic you know how does it get its information because it's an app that uses the apple watch information so we're going to look at that and then we're going to dive into the data in a bunch of charts now i am not an expert i mean i graduated engineering but i'm not a scientist when i look at trends and things like that and so there might be times where i say it's highly correlated when basically from st some stat statistician's analysis that's not highly correlated, that's medium correlated. I, I don't know, I'm not using true technical terms by some variable that's based on um, some specific industry factor. I'm just telling you what I see in trends across a long period of time, looking at a multiple of different metrics and aspects in different apps. As well, you know, there's different schools of thought or different people's opinions about what physiological metrics flow through to be the determinant. This one metric is the determinant for how ready you are to exercise that day. I don't personally believe that to be absolutely true, but there are people that do. I'm just saying, here's the data, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion on it at the end of it. My opinion is not based on you know years of doctorate level research of sports physiology. It's just looking at these aspects and have, having been somebody that's been tracking and wearing and testing devices alongside a CrossFit training regimen for a number of years. This is my take on it and this is my perception of it and you can take it for what it's worth. So again, what is the outline for today? One, we're gonna look at what is training readiness on the watch and then on the app. We're gonna look at what is training readiness when it comes to these other components, whoop, polar nightly recharge and athletic, and where do they get their information? And then we're gonna look at the data, and then we're gonna talk about in general, who's you know least worthwhile to most worthwhile. And then in summary, I'm gonna give you like, if I only could choose one in my whole life, this is what I would choose. So let's dive into what is training readiness, starting looking at it, looking at it on the watch. All right, so Garmin's training readiness on the watch. You can see it just basically gives you a simple summary for the day and it tells you what contributed to that is the primary factor and then you get into the main factors. So you have two that are based on the last 24 hours. So how you slept last night, you can go through the whole sleep aspects and then the recovery time. So fully recovered, no hours left. Then you have the four uh, seven day aspects. So you can dive into any of those and you can see what last night was like and what your baseline is like to determine if you're balanced or unbalanced, your acute load, which is actually pretty helpful because you can see how much training load you've been under and what your green sort of range of loads expected should be, your sleep history, which just shows your score over the last seven days to see the quality of your sleep over a longer period of time, and your stress history and the score. So those are the primary components that flow into the main recommendation for training readiness on the watch. Let's look at the app. Okay, so here's the training readiness and breakdown. It gives you a summary, summary score, gives you sort of a verbiage for moderate, like basically what 
spect part in the spectrum you are, and direction for the day, rest for the day, didn't sleep great last night. And it's based on two overnight factors or two 24-hour factors and four um, long-term factors. So you have the sleep score from last night and the recovery time you woke up with today. So the recovery time is a recommendation of how much time you should wait before doing the next hard workout. So if your recovery time is high, meaning you've got 25 hours left, then your training readiness might be lower for this particular day because this is just sort of a start to the day recommendation. And then you have your long-term trends, your heart rate variability status, which is your overall the nature of your heart rate variability over seven days. So is it balanced? Like is it stable, your heart rate variability, over the course of the seven days within a, a similar range? Or is it unstable or unbalanced? You have your acute load. That's how much load you placed on your body over the last seven days, like the rigor and the volume of workout and the difficulty of the workout over the last seven days. You have your sleep score history, which is the last seven days. Have you been sleeping in general? terrible, fair, good, whatever it is, your general sleep quality over a seven day period and your general stress level over a seven day period. Now stress is a calculation of heart rate variability. So when, your heart rate, when you're stressed out, your heart rate variability goes um, down. So you're more burdened, you're burdening your heart and you're overall uh, wearing down your body. So again, Garmin, has their training readiness right now pinned against six physiological components, two 24-hour related components, four seven-day related components from training, from wellness, from a culmination of all different things. Again, training, training rigor, and wellness all together to determine one singular score, one singular recommendation for the day, and this is typically taken in a snapshot when you wake up. Now, if you do a hard workout in the middle of the day and you have a training effect, an aerobic training effect over three, this training readiness score will no longer appear on your primary landing tab because it's basically gonna sit and wait until you wake up the next day. So it's no longer giving you an active training readiness score after your really hard workout of the day where you pushed your aerobic effect above three, uh, three out of five. So anyway, that is how it looks on the app and the primary components that go into it. All right, so you can see training readiness from the Garmin system is based on those two 24 hour metrics and four seven day metrics. Now let's look at what are the primary recommendations for recovery, for training readiness when it comes from WHOOP, Polar Nightly Recharge, and Athletic, and where do they get their information. So we're gonna dive into the apps. We're not looking at watches. We're gonna look at the apps, and then we'll come back together. Okay, so here's WHOOP's system. Obviously, WHOOP is based on the strain for the day as well as your recovery starting out the day. So this recovery score is just how ready you are for the next hard workout. It is based on some physiological metrics, slightly on sleep, but really more heavily on heart rate variability. And you can see those components here in the bottom, heart rate variability, resting heart rate, sleep, and respiratory rate. But from multiple tracking of WHOOP's calculation, their recovery score is heavily pinned to your heart rate variability. So it is not as significantly skewed by poor sleep period, like how long you slept. If you had higher heart, higher than average heart rate variability, you're gonna get a high recovery score. And it's just sort of slightly tilted. So we'll say this recovery score is based 80% on heart rate variability score from last night. And it's skewed, bent, tilted, based on whether your resting heart rate was better or worse than previous nights, your amount of sleep and your respiration rate is, was better or worse than averages. And you can see that over the course of time. They say green is you go hard in your workout, yellow, take some time off, red, you know, you should not work out that day or what, however you wanna perceive it. So this is WHOOP's system. And it is, you know, again, largely on one physiological metrics. And then you have polar system. So polar system is basically a combination of your sleep score, which is an evaluation of last night's sleep stats relative to the last four weeks of sleep sleep stats. And it 
you know, results in a score you see in the middle left there of 79 out of 100. So, you know, you got a high C, <laughs> B minus. And again, you can see your components, you know, the amount of time you slept, long interruptions, continuity, actual sleep percentage, and then some of the sleep stage aspects, how much time percentage-wise you were in REM, how much time percentage-wise you were in deep sleep relative to your moving four-week averages. So it takes this for one half of its recommendation for your nightly recharge. So your recommendation for how hard you go in today's workout is one half based on sleep score and quality of sleep from last night. And it's one half based on ANS, Autonomic Nervous System Rejuvenation. And you can see that it's got, let's just look at this first graph. It's got the whole night of sleep, but it's taking a four hour window. And that's what it's basing the stats on is a four hour window of your sleep. And it takes your beat to beat interval average, your heart rate variability over that time and your breathing rate over that time and compares it to the baseline, compares it to the last 28 days and gives you a positive or negative score, either plus 10 or minus 10, somewhere in that range. And it takes those scores and combines these two. If you're in the green on both, it's going to give you a green for the workout that day, a green for its recommendation of how well you recharged. And there's been a couple times where I've gotten, you know, 100%. And then there's been times where I've gotten, you know, low scores compromised where you know my ans score was below average even though my sleep score so it it does have times where it gives you like failure ratings it just you know tells you to take it easy and then last is the athletic now the athletic is based on information from the apple watch it's saying we're going to take information from the apple watch and there's a couple ways you can give it to us and we're going to use it to evaluate in a similar method that's those these same tenants that whoop is recovery exertion and sleep you know how much sleep you needed versus how much sleep and they do a lot of really other cool stuff so they i love this because it's basically can give you a sleep debt calculation where you can see over time in having a seven and a half hour of sleep per night goal i've been in sleep debt and now i'm in the green so you know i've been able to work on that through this app same thing with the exertion it will say based on your recovery last night what your score should be your exertion for the next workout should be so it gives a lot of really interesting stuff but where it gets its recovery recommendation this 71 percent, you are 71 percent recovered today is either you're wearing your apple watch while you sleep and unfortunately the apple watch only takes a few spot checks for heart rate variability throughout the night. So it's either going to be based on whatever those random spot checks are from the Apple Watch, or if when you first wake up, you do a one minute breathing exercise on the breathing exercise on the Apple Watch, and it'll pull a heart rate variability snapshot from there. So there's two forms of error in this calculation. One is if you forget to take the morning measurement, or if you wake up for an hour and then go back to take the morning measurement, then there's user error there. Two, if the Apple Watch is sending random spot checks that don't relate to a clear snapshot of the quality of your heart rate variability throughout the night. But Athletic depends on those components to determine its primary recommendation for recovery as well as the rec recommendation for how hard you should exert yourself that day. So that is Athletic. Let's begin to look at it. All right, baseline is established. So now we're gonna look at the analysis. The first thing we're gonna do is look at Garmin specifically when you just look at a lot of their physiological components just to see if on a chart, it looks like there's similarities between one physiological component that flows through to training redness and some of the others. And we're just gonna sort of take that and then we're gonna dive into layering of each of the other physiological components from athletic, from Polar Night Recharge and from Whoop. So let's get into the deck. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just look at Garmin's training readiness and how it compares to some of the other physiological metrics. So some of this is just gonna be a little bit of an eyesore, so I apologize because I'm trying to separate out data and make it worthwhile. So here's Garmin's training readiness over the course of a month and a half. Um, and you can see some other components just to see if it gets skewed by certain physiological components. Now, if you look in the beginning part of the period, you can see it was 
walloped down to zero. Don't train today. Don't train for a week. And that was based on the recovery time. So anytime it is near the bottom, you have a lot of recovery time left, meaning you're at 0% readiness to work out. Anytime it's at 100%, then you have zero recovery time and you're 100% ready to work out. So you can see in the beginning, here and training readiness had been activated for a while, there is a big correlation between those two in particular. Um, and then later on, you can see body battery and sleep score. And it's interesting to see that body battery and sleep score have a little bit of high correlation. So the sleep score might be driven primarily by body battery, which is driven primarily by heart rate variability. So that is really interesting that quality of your sleep is driven more by body battery. And that's just something I didn't know was a component. So you can see here, you have a couple of times where you were at zero on training, I mean, on uh, recovery time. So you, I, you know, basically had more than 20 hours of recovery time left. And I woke up at whatever time I woke up that morning. So it was almost a whole day. So I'm 0% for the day going in. And you can see that the training readiness was brought down. So you can see sort of in the backdrop, the recovery time is brought down by the higher recovery time, but not brought down completely and was sort of kept buoyant by, you know, body battery and sleep score. Um, although all factors were turned down. So this, you know, is after training readiness had been used for a little while. So it wasn't like this was just brand new now that I'm on the scene 17 days in. But at the same time, you can see that probably in the beginning, there was some normalization that was occurring with the training readiness because it was just overly whopped. Now I did a, an incredibly rigorous workout, which kept my recovery time in the three day bandwidth for a while and I only took one day off. So I went back and did another workout. And so it just increased the recovery time to another three day bandwidth. So it just, you know, basically training, training readiness was just trying to tell me, you know, you're, you overdid it that one time and then you keep, keep working out. So that's what skewed it downside. Okay. So going to the chart now of data, this is basically looking at a time period between July 6th and July 29th. And this is including all aspects. So Garmin's training readiness and some of the other Garmin aspects, the WHOOP recovery scores, the athletic recovery scores, and the polar scores. Um, the polar scores will extend beyond this into the last couple of days. So if you look at the chart, now this is Garmin's training, and training readiness ugh, with WHOOP and athletic. Now athletic is driven off high, heart, rate, heart rate variability. So that's why I'm keeping WHOOP as a sort of a baseline variable. Because what you'll see is that it's actually, here's training readiness, here's athletic. It might have some general flow, but it it is a, often a pronounced way. And if you were to compare athletic, at least in these measures, and I was just doing a spot check. As soon as I woke up, I did the one minute breathing at, um, aspect on an Apple Watch. So I wasn't letting it just record all night and take random samples. I was doing what I think I was supposed to do. And uh, this was a few days after I had been already recording some of those samples. Um, but if you compare athletic to, you know, the whoop, it also doesn't look like it's quite following the same trend line. So it looks like it's just off relative to whoop, which is also heart rate variability driven component and definitely off for training readiness. Now you can see it's pretty slightly off from the body battery, which is a little bit more in line with WHOOP's recovery score. So then we go with athletic versus all of them. So polars, WHOOPs, you can see if you look at it that, you know, polar, which is light blue, I mean, polar, ha, ah, WHOOP, which is light blue, polar, which is orange. They have some similarities um, between the two, but all of them, the, the one variable that's off amongst all of them is the athletic variable. So it's the least like it. Maybe it's somewhat similar on the backside, but that's only just because they're all sort of close to 100% or slightly recovered. But it just is the least appearing to be the least worthwhile. So now we take the primary components, and this is, you know, over a long period of time, you know, all the way through the 20th. And shrink that down, you'll see that it is many, many days worth. Um, so lots and lots of time. And we're looking at Garmin's training readiness, also have some other components, Garmin Polar and, and Whoop. So the first thing we'll look at is Garmin's training readiness versus Polar Nightly Recharge. Okay, so Polar's 
Garmin's training readiness for Polar Nightly Recharge, you can see that it actually is lining up, you know, relatively, you know, well in comparison to one another. So there's actually some similarity, especially sort of through this midsection here. Through this midsection here, you can see that there's a lot of correlation between the two. Obviously, when Garmin was really affected and the Garmin training was really affected by the high recovery time scores, it skewed the plot. But you can see some correlation in the middle here, which actually lines up quite nicely. And then we have Garmin's training re uh, readiness versus the WHOOP recovery system. So you can see that there is some similarity in the middle here. Um, these are following similar trend lines. Obviously the same skew occurred with the high recovery time, but you can see in the back half here that this looks off. It doesn't look like there's any correlation in these last few days, um, just in the middle with the medium uh, strain scores, but something is off in the more recent days. And so I thought, well, wait a second, this is training readiness and WHOOP is driven off heart rate variability. So what if we look at just the heart rate variability driven metric, which is Garmin's body battery. Now, obviously we have the heart rate variability tracking overnight, but body battery tracks it throughout all time. And um, it, you can see between the polar nightly recharge in summary, there's a little bit of correlation between Garmin's body battery, but there's a high level of correlation between WHOOP's recovery score and Garmin's body battery. So you can see that the lines are very similar uh, when you compare the two. Now in this spectrum, you know, it looks like WHOOP was appropriately giving me a low recovery score on the time when I did in that beginning session have a really hard workout. But in many cases, it's actually following what looks like almost an exact, I mean, this back half is almost an exact um, flow of the Garmin body battery versus the WHOOP recovery. And this, you could just sort of say, well, WHOOP recovery is just what Garmin's body battery metric is telling us. Um, now we have Garmin's own heart rate variability tracking and um, recovery store aspects. So you don't see as much correlation between the polar nightly recharge. So in simple terms, here's how it looks over the whole plot of time. So here's how it looks versus athletic. And okay, so here is the difference of Garmin's training readiness versus athletic. Here's Garmin's training readiness versus polar nightly recharge. And here's Garmin's training readiness versus whoop recovery scores. So you can see that there's the most correlation with Polar's nightly recharge, which is a combination of sleep and autonomic nervous system regeneration. There is the least correlation, the least similarity between, um, sorry, training readiness and athletic, and the second least within Roop's recovery as well. From all this data, we can note that the body battery, Garmin's body battery metric and Whoop's recovery score, their whole kit and caboodle recovery score are more highly correlated. So if you're looking at all of these things, that's what I would glean from the data. I would glean from the data that Whoop recovery is, all, is just very highly correlated with Garmin's already in existence body battery score. I would say that the Polar Nightly Recharge is looking very similar to Garmin's training readiness score. And it makes sense because Polar Nightly Recharge is based on sleep analytics as well as heart rate variability analytics or the autonomic nervous system analytics. So Garmin's training readiness is coming right in line with Polar Nightly Recharge, not very much so with Whoop, although we see that Whoop's really just driven off body battery and athletic, you know, I probably, you know, maybe this is just needs more full analysis just to see what went wrong here. Let's talk about it in some. Now taking all that into account, looking at all the data across all the different spectrums, let's take each one of the offerings or analytical aspects and summarize each of them in general. All right, coming in at the least worthwhile for my testing was athletic, uh, mainly because you actually, the best results would come if you are taking a one minute check in the morning as soon as you wake up. Otherwise you're dependent on whenever the Apple Watch itself randomly communicates heart rate variability throughout the night. I found it to be less consistent or more user dependent, and I probably even skewed the results because it was just based on a, a faulty approach to testing. Now, the second least valuable to me was the Whoop app. Just a buffed up version of what I consider body battery. So it's a beefed up 
more one-dimensional version of body battery. It's beefed up because it adds other elements into the heart rate variability calculation metric. Um, but it is primary heart rate variability, which is actually what we saw from the charts is primarily the same metric you're getting from body battery. So the pro is that it's simple and the con that it is just too simple, too one dimensional and obviously doesn't come with a device alongside it. Now, the best simple combination of both is the Polar Nightly Recharge. It does a very simple, straightforward combination of taking your sleep and giving you all the sleep analytics, but also summarizing it in a score and taking that score and coupling it with your autonomic nervous system regeneration off of four or three primary metrics um, and using that score to, to determine how recharged you are to approach the next hard workout. Consistent, reliable, just a little bit too simple. Um, but hands down to me, the Garmin Training Readiness is the most advanced, but also more kinked. It is definitely kinked in the development process, but I do think it makes, you know, it is looking at the right overall summary of factors. It's got too much going on right now, but absolutely on the right track. And it's the most advanced as far as taking a multiple of different physiological metrics and combining it to determine readiness. So let's talk in summary. Okay, so looking at all of them, if I had to choose just one to live off of, it would hands down be Garmin. Now, obviously, the training readiness aspect that they have just added a month or two ago is littered with growing pains. It has got some kinks to work out because it's trying to do so much all at once and in one simple number. But think of the primary components that have been valuable, worthwhile analytical aspects for years now, body battery very much worthwhile very much you know tracked into your physiological makeup and how your recovery is the recovery time score itself it started out as a great one but a great aspect like five or eight years ago but they've also added into it a combination of your body battery which is your stress throughout the day and your quality of sleep the night before to determine a more advanced recovery time those have been great and now they're adding to it heart rate variability trends both over the course of seven days and your ability to see your full heart rate variability data from the last night's sleep so in simple terms if i think of training readiness as a concept i do believe it is a factor of short-term trends like your overnight analysis coupled with long-term but more recent trends and if you look at the components of the training readiness that they're trying to amass into a singular score to approach your next hard workout i think they are absolutely on the right track and are far more advanced than any of the other platforms out there even if they are facing growing pains with how to take all this information and simplify it into one score. They have sleep from your last night and the recovery time from your last rigorous workout, what you, how much recovery time you had left when you woke up that morning, and they're coupling it with seven day trends for heart rate variability, for training load you've placed on your body, for the quality of sleep over a whole week, as well as the level of stress you've had over a whole week. So that is what I believe training, true training readiness is based on those components. It is not, in my opinion, not just a snapshot of just one physiological metric, which is simple terms, what WHOOP is hinging on. And there is scientific, scientific evidence that shows that heart rate variability is a major determinant or insight into some of your recovery aspects, but I think it is based on a far broader set and a far broader set of quality of different aspects. And that's why I like that it's based on short-term and long-term. Second to Garmin's training readiness, I do think the Polar Nightly Recharge just comes up as a solid offering. It is simple and it's just based, you know, especially on the autonomic nervous system rejuvenation is based on just a four hour snapshot of your sleep. It's taking a lot of quality pieces of information into account and combining them into one actionable score, one actionable just sort of direction. And I, I, you know, it's proven to be even more worthwhile when do doing this long-term comparison against some mul multiple other things. When you look at Whoop, I, I, I just can't help but feel like Whoop is just one Garmin offering, one Garmin physiological offering. It's like body battery plus. It's like the body battery metric plus a couple of other components that skew just sort of the results with a little bit more specificity on that recovery score. But Whoop is 
it, in my opinion, might just be for those who don't want to wear a watch. Um, obviously, you don't need the GPS tracking built into a device and then don't need something that's going to give you notifications and weather and all those other things. You want physiological tracking, but you don't want any of the watch aspects. That's who Whoop's going to be for. And athletic, athletic, I really feel like they are doing some great development things and some other sides to the athletic app offering. Um, but I really feel like athletic is really just for those who are die hard devoted to the Apple Watch and want to combine some of this sports and training wellness aspects to their life. So that is the summary of the in-depth study of the Garmin tra training readiness platform and analytics alongside multiple others. It's the Figure Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.